Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I am going to talk about the most awaited feature, which is a healing agent. So this is in public preview right now. So anybody can access this feature. You can uh, try it out. If you have any suggestions, you can put it out in the forum. Okay, so I feel this is the most awaited feature as per my uh, understanding. So here I would like to drive a quick demo on this particular one. So before we get into the video, I would like to showcase what all the capabilities the uh, healing agent have. And I will also showcase a demo with a quite easy examples how the agent will heal itself in case of any unexpected errors that happens. So without any ado, let's get into the video. So first of all, uh, if you see it over here, I would also recommend going through this forum post. Um, I'll give this link in the description. You can go and check it out. So what all the capabilities that this particular healing agent have? So if you see here, whenever there's a change in the application interface or the automation is obstructed by UI interface, healing agent repairs the issues. So if anybody, whoever is working on UI automation, the most common issue that we face is whenever there's an upgrade or whenever there's a change in the selectors, the automation gets failed, right? So it gets faulted. In such cases, the healing agent has the intelligence to auto heal, right? So if you see here, it can heal the own automations. It can also provide you the recommendations. So how is that recommendation is provided through autopilot? Okay, so I will also show you how the recommendation is provided. Some recommendations you can directly apply as well which will change the code and it is a very simple fix from your side and some recommendations you have to do it manually okay so it will suggest what is the best recommendation of in order to heal that automation okay so and during the runtime how it automatically fix that particular issue without faulting your job so both of the things i would be showing in the demo okay and also in case of any obstructions by UI interface. So let's say, what is the one more common issue that we face whenever we are doing an UI automation? Unexpected pop-ups, right? So the bot is trying to enter some value in, on an application screen. Suddenly there's a, let's uh, consider a system upgrade, okay? System upgrade uh, pop-up that comes in, which is not something handled in our automation, right? Because it can be of different, uh, windows it can be of different uh, bot, uh, screen type right uh, the parent uh, selector or the parent element can be different thing every time if you are encountering a different pop ups if it's not handled in automation generally we encounter issues uh, of the jobs getting faulted right so in such cases also it will be automatically filled and if you see over here, it will provide actionable recommendations. Healing agent intelligently analyzes the application interfaces and provides targeted suggestions to minimize the time spent on troubleshooting. So whenever there's an issue, what we usually do, we go through the logs, we try to get the uh, code into our local and then we try to rerun by executing the same scenario again, which will take a lot of time in order to just identify the issue. And then after trying to uh, fix the issue we again rerun to ensure that it's working fine right this is there's a lot of time you invest in order to troubleshoot and also fix the issue but with the help of the uh, healing agent it will analyze the application interface and it will also provide you the screenshot and with the recommendations right it will help you to minimize the time spent on troubleshooting and enable quick resolutions on issues and allowing the automation to be put back into production as soon as possible. This is what we want, right? In production, if there's any issue, uh, if, the, if there's any downtime on that particular bot, we want to fix the issue as soon as possible that is faulting in production, right? So this agent will help you to minimize the time that you spent on troubleshooting these issues and it will also help you with the resolutions. So your downtime on the bot in case of any production issues will be minimized. It's so wonderful. It's not just 
exaggerating the things but however i'll show you how quickly you can fix this with the help of the demo okay so first of all uh, here are some use cases what a uh, healing agent can help you with as i told you handling dynamic selectors you can go through this complete forum post but i'll get, just give you a very quick high level idea flexible anchor positions handling obstructing ui elements as i said you regarding the pop ups adaptive wait times so in case most of the times if the application is slow if so many people are trying to access the application so there is a slowness that we observe in kind of applications in case of ui interfaces while it is getting loaded so it automatically adapts the waiting time and also ensuring you automation adaptability so your target application element is adapted but retains the original purpose submit button okay so if you see here it has that understanding about what is the button so let's say it is a submit button but if it got renamed to confirm so in such cases it will try to adapt uh, based on the context okay so this is what it is so now if i just give you an idea about how this works what are the prerequisites that you need to have in order to get this uh, uh, auto healing work for you i will just uh, mention you what are the prerequisites so first of all you should have it will be working only on windows and cross platform projects only it does not supported in legacy okay you have to make sure that you are working only on the windows and the cross platform and you have to ensure that you are using ui automation dot activities package which is 24.1.12.3 and the it is in the preview as of now okay and the studio version should be greater than 24.10 so these are the main prerequisites and along with that ui automation only modern activities because it is uh, it, uh, automatically it enforces object repository right so only modern activities you need to have okay so these are the basic prerequisites that you need to know you need to have in place before you try to implement this in your workflows okay okay so now i would just give you a high level idea of how this works in case of unattended scenarios okay so i will also show you the demo but on a high level i would like to just show you this so you run an you run an automation in the production let's say this is a system exception because of ui errors so automation is recovered with self healing as i mentioned you even though there is a change in the ui element it gets self healed because of the healing agent all relevant information is collected in the error time sorry information about the error is collected automatically and it will be sent to the orchestrator i'll show you where this information is stored in the orchestrator also okay and the admin can receive the notification admin checks the dedicated orchestrator developer receives full production information users dedicated studio panel for information and the recommendations can be automatically applied so i'll show you how this happens and then you can just test this in the uat and deploy this back into the production so without autopilot what happens if there's any error the automation fails and you have to debug troubleshoot what happened uh, why this happened and you have to fix that issue manually test in uat and deploy that into the production this takes a longer time so this is what it is right so now i am going to show you how we are going to do this demo okay so as i told you these are the prerequisites that you need to have in order to test this or apply this into your workflow so first of all if i just open my workflow i just took it very simple workflow okay so if you see here um i am just using a ui bank application so and i'm trying to register a new employee so let's say my use case works on registering this particular employee or uh, customer into the ui bank okay so every time i do it uh i go into the ui bank application and i enter the first name of the employee customer okay so let's consider this is my ui bank application okay so now what happens is let me just show you so i will also show what i have done so let me my packages
So out of these two, this is active as of now. So I wanted to make um, how can I make this back? Okay, let me just uh, activate it from here itself. UI bank demo. And then I'll edit it. I'll roll back to the previous version, which is this, okay? And then update. So if you see here, this is the first one which I ran. I'll just start the job. And if you see, once after you publish the process, what you have to do is you have to enable healing agent. And then you have to enable this so that whatever the issues that are detected in the runtime, it will be automatically enabling the agent. The uh, agent will be doing the self-healing. Okay. So what I do, this is the first time when I'm running the process. It is just trying to enter the first name of the uh, customer over here. And then it has perfectly worked fine for me. But now let's say next time the application got upgraded. Okay. So let's consider a scenario where the application got upgraded. Okay. Mm. But I have not changed. Let me just show you UI bank, right? So let's consider UI bank application got upgraded. And then I have not updated my workflow. So in such cases, what actually happens is something that I wanted to show you. So if I just open the logs. So if you see, it is trying to search for the selector. But however, it cannot find the selector because there's an upgrade that happened on the application. So now ideally what happens in the uh, existing scenario, it gets failed. Without auto healing, it gets failed. Saying that UI element cannot be found, does not exist or something as such. But however, with the uh, healing agent, with the self-healing mechanism that it has, it should be automatically figuring it out what is the upgraded uh, selector, right? What is the latest selector it got upgraded to and then it will enter the value. So if you see, it has identified. So if I just show you what happened over here in the logs. So if you see, the selector got failed, right? And the healing agent started recovery analysis and then Reco uh, recovered using foreground restore strategies and then it has recovered so i'll just show you what just happened so if i just show you the logs of this So here it says, okay, here it says it got healed. And if you go to healing agent, it will show you what it got healed, okay? So if you see here, my selector, the change, the first selector that I've given is, the original one is ID as fit name, but recommended is first name. So what you have to do in your code is just whatever the recommended selector is there, you just have to update the selector. However, so if you see here, this is something that we can check it out in the orchestrator. But what happens is, if you see here, in the job details, so if you open this in the studio, whatever the process that you are running, it will be opened up in the studio and in the autopilot, you can actually import that. I'm not able to do it currently because my studio version uh, that I have over there and I have linked over here. Um, I mean, the studio version of that is not in sync. So because of which I'm not able to get it over here. That's what I'm thinking because I'm not able to get the details that I am having it in the orchestrator over here. But I'll cre uh, create one more clear video on that, like how it will show the recommendations and how you can apply the recommendations as well. Okay, so before we jump into the last segment of the video, I would like to showcase you how this is done. So I'll try to showcase you step by step. Okay. So first of all, I have taken a UI bank. Uh, so I have taken an open browser. Okay. And then I have taken a first, uh, just type into activity. 
and then I have indicated this on the screen. So if I just uh, edit the target, you can just see that, right? So if you see in the strict selector, I've just changed the ID to the fit name. Instead of first name, I've just changed the ID and then I have published it, right? So when I published it, it, it has identified that particular selector is not the correct one right there's a change in the selector so automatically when it has executed the job it has healed by itself right so however if you see the anchor it still it still works fine but the target has changed a little bit but still it figured out what is the correct one so it is recommending me over here right so if i just show you how this works and how this actually uh, uh, applied is through this way okay and uh, the last segment which i wanted to showcase is so whenever you publish an automation right so for the let's consider you are publishing it for the first time so whenever you publish an automation in order to see these things over here what you have to do is so you add a process whenever you add the process so let's say you're doing a let's consider api automation okay so here there's an option enable healing agent so if you do this enabling healing agent for the process, okay, so if you do it for the process, it will be enabled for all the jobs that you are running automatically. You can disable it if you want, but however, automatically it will be done. But let's consider if you, um, if you see here, if I just restart the process, it will ask me. If I want to enable this or not, if you enable this, then only the self healing will be applied on that particular process. Otherwise, it will not be OK. This is how you can enable the healing. And one last thing that I wanted to show is how you can get that automatically fixed over here is uh, you can either export. I mean, the, as I have shown you over here, as soon as you run this. Okay, when you go to the logs, you can see it over here. When you open this in the studio, whatever you download, you will be able to see in your autopilot. Uh, so I will showcase that in my next video. Uh, right now I'm facing one issue. So if you just open this JSON also, you can see a lot of information over here. I You can ex import this one as well, I believe. I'm still yet to explore that. So this is about the recovery summary under which folder, all of that information under which tenant. But yeah, uh, in the next video, I'll show you how you can import that particular, uh, uh, you know, recovery information and how you can actually apply those recommendations quickly and easily that will be the most interesting part okay so because if you just observe in the demo that was provided over here right if you just go through this particular video the demonstrates that how this can be automatically applied. So if you see here, similar to what we have seen in the orchestrator, it will show you the target. That means the original one and the recommended one. If you just click on apply recommendations, it will be automatically applied into your workflow. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change the selector or anything. You just have to apply that recommendation. It will be worked. So in some cases, these kind of recommendations may not be working. So if you see here, in this case, it just asks to surround the activity with three triscopes, which you have to do it manually. It will not be something that you can apply directly. Okay. So in the next video, I'll show you uh, as I'm currently facing an issue with my autopilot. So I'll show in the next video how that can be done. But I hope this video has been useful for you and I feel you might have learned something insightful. If so, please do let me know in the comments and also check it out this particular forum post where you can learn a lot of things and experiment beyond that so for, if you have any still questions about this please do let me know in the comments and also do subscribe to my channel like the video and share across your friends who are also exploring the same content until then bye bye i'll see you in the next video